Cessna 48271, ready for departure. I'd like a right crosswind turn out, please. So this will be another short VFR hop in Southern California. We're about to depart Long Beach in the Cessna 152 for Flaybob, which is a small airport out at Riverside. It's about 40 miles to Flaybob, and we're going to fly more or less direct through the gap at Chino Hills, basically navigating by what we can see. Once we're away from Long Beach, we're getting flight following from SoCal Approach and just listening out for traffic advice. I'm using the SciTech panel to manage the radios here and uh, if you followed my previous VFR trip you'll know I dismissed the SciTech radio panels as basically expensive junk. In fact uh, I had two of these panels, I sent them back, got my money back. But things move on and today I'm running this panel with the SPAD driver which is uh, currently a freeware product in beta testing that makes the SciTech panels and that's the multi and switch panels as well as the radios, makes them usable. I'll say a bit more about the driver as we go. I'm dialing in the Paradise VOR at Riverside here. I'm not flying straight towards it, I'm just keeping it off to the left as a cross check in case I get disoriented, especially with all this cloud around. We're going to fly more or less overhead Corona and if we go due east from Corona we'll pick up the 91 Riverside Freeway. It's uh, going to take us northeast and then swing around more to the north. This takes us around the back of the Paradise VOR and of Riverside Airport. So on the radios, here we're getting a squawk code from SoCal Approach. If you're very observant, you might notice something else interesting here, which is that we can also enter the altimeter setting on the panel. This is a feature added to the panel by the new driver, and uh, it does add significantly to the realism, because you have to dial it in whenever you get a handoff. Altimeter setting, obviously calibrating your altimeter to a local pressure setting. So we're heading east from Long Beach, aiming for about 3,000 feet and more or less following the road towards the gap at Chino Hills. The only other thing we'll do on the radio is to get Riverside ATIS and then dial in the Unicom frequency for Flaybug. As I've only got one panel now, you probably notice I'm switching the bottom radio between Nav 1 and the transponder display. This aircraft only has one COM radio, so I'm leaving the top radio alone. If, if you were in a 172 or something with two COM radios, you could manage both by switching back and forth. Now we've got to keep below 2700 feet beyond Corona, that keeps us out of Riverside's airspace. So what does this SPAD driver do that the SciTech one doesn't? Well, it does an awful lot and I'm not going to attempt a detailed review here. But in a nutshell, it does at least three important things. First, and most important, it gives you control over the sensitivity of the rotary knobs, which means you can get rid of that hair trigger effect that basically makes it impossible to dial in numbers precisely with the SciTech drivers. This alone, in, in my view, turns these radio panels from expensive junk into something that's actually usable. Second, and uh, this is more important for using the multi-panel than the radio, you can also adjust the acceleration of the rotary knobs. What does that mean? Well, um, you might be aware that you can change your mouse pointer acceleration in the Windows control panel, and this is a bit like that. What it means in practice is that you can make large changes when, for example, dialing in altitudes or headings for the autopilot without getting cramp in your arms from having to spin that knob so many times. And the third major difference in this driver is that every button and every knob on every panel, and that includes the switch panel, is completely customizable. This driver uses FSUIPC instead of SIM Connect. And uh, again, the details are far too involved to cover here, but it does mean you can customize the panels for all your payware aircraft that uh, aren't natively supported by SIM Connect. Another common criticism of um, certainly the multi panel. So we're approaching Flaybob and we're going to start our approach at that four-way junction up ahead. We'll turn left and fly towards the lake, uh, which puts us more or less on heading for runway 24. It's an interesting airport, Flaybob. You'll notice there's a mountain actually in the circuit and uh, the guidebook cautions to look for stray dogs and cracks Flaybob in the runway. So there it is, the SPAD driver for the SciTech panels. Fantastic piece of software and for the moment at least it's uh, free. And uh, not only does it make the panels usable, but it completely opens things up so you can customise the functions on an aircraft by aircraft basis, by the way, and save each one in a separate profile It's actually the aircraft. But for my money, uh, which uh, is no money at all, don't forget, what this does is it makes these panels usable. And uh, I'll be keeping this one. So follow the links in the credits. Uh, definitely worth a look.